Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Spectrum Drama where we take a look at the hottest posts on Spectrum for the week and give our opinions on them. Uh, so before we get started don't forget to hit that like button and if you haven't already subscribe hit that bell uh, to get notified of our most recent videos um, and um, yes do it just hit that bell and we will come to your house and give you hugs is that is that a thing can i send you can i send you around to give them hugs Luke? no i think COVID. that's that would be classed as stalking so no we can't do that <laughs> that's true yeah and we're in a lockdown at the moment so i don't think we're going anywhere <laughs> but there you go so uh let's get started Okay, so first up, we've got a post from TCN Talon, and it says, Death of a Spaceman. Just trash it. All of it. Um, and so basically, um, Talon is basically annoyed, um, and he's fully expecting everyone, including probably us, to uh, just facepalm um, at all the things he's about to say. But um, he does not like this Death of a Spaceman concept. Um, he thinks it unnecessarily complicates what should be a straightforward game. And basically what Talon ideally is after is more of kind of like a an incentive not to die, but not quite to the full death of a spaceman kind of level. Um, and um, I don't know, I think a lot of people have been kind of, I don't know if you put it as excited for the death of a spaceman, but I think a lot of people are kind of looking forward to seeing kind of what it brings to the game and how it's going to change the way people act in the game are you excited for the death of a spaceman or do you think that it might be a bit overkill no i'm kind of excited for it i think these kind of mechanics um give more reason not to die um it makes you a lot more cautious in the game uh, you can see that in various other games that have got some kind of permadeath um yeah I i'm i'm looking forward to seeing what it actually brings to the verse when uh when we eventually get there i feel that he uh, the Talon's real problems are with the the, the strange uh, cloning, you know, you've got like three, four lives or whatever it is, and then your, your body's too busted up to reconstitute again. Yeah. So you have to make a, you know, uh, uh, a new clone or, or whatever it is that uh, they're, they're coming up. It is quite convoluted and it brings a lot of questions um i've seen a lot more questions about it now than there was before and um, there's all sorts of questions going on about if you can clone yourself then why would you ever get old um yeah it, if you can clone yourself why would you have um uh, a kind of cybernetic implant to replace an arm because you can just grow a new one and you know yeah. these kind of questions and some people aren't going to really care too much about all of that whereas others are going to really focus on oh, it's not realistic kind of thing yeah and um yeah it's one of those mechanics where i think we're really gonna to have to see it in action uh to get a full picture of everything about it i'm still mostly convinced that they don't know how it's all going to happen yet um no. So they threw some big ideas out in the last uh, calling. Was it calling all devs? I think it was a calling, calling all devs. devs. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm kind of benching my judgment until I know more about it. Um, from what I've heard, it some bits are a bit confusing, and I get why people don't like that. But um, yeah, I'm more curious about it than kind of apprehensive. Yeah, and uh, speaking of the Cardinal Devs, you know that this is going to be a very touchy subject for a lot of people, yeah. which is why they had Chris on. Um, because obviously then people would go, well, it's coming out of Chris Roberts' mouth, and so it's okay, we'll accept it. Um, and I think that's kind of, that's probably their entire plan. But um, I, I don't mind it. I don't see the point in, in worrying about it. Like you, you, you brought up something which I think is very valid, is the science of it. You know, the, you've got this... Um, and don't get me wrong, I'm not, you know, sort of saying that they're wrong, but there's a large percentage of people who play this game um, and really love the realism of it. Um, and so when we did a post last week about top speeds of ships, 
They were like, yes, but, you know, in reality, there wouldn't be a top speed. Mar, science. And they didn't seem to take into consideration that the game doesn't give a shit about their science. <laughs> um, you know, the game has rules and we're, we're talking about in-game rules. And I think we're going to get into that horrible situation with this as well, where people are going to read too much into cloning science and all this kind of stuff and what could be possible and say, yeah, but if you're doing that, why not this? Because that's what the game wants. You know, I mean, we yeah. can't be a hundred percent realistic all the time, um, but I think that dying need there needs to be a threat, you know, and um, and the way they're looking at it at the moment with this kind of sort of limited number of respawns, we'll call it, um, you know, before you're going to need to um, take action and do things, it's kind of a smart way of doing it because it kind of it's always going to keep it in the back of your mind, you know, can I afford another death, <laughs> basically? Yeah, yeah. I, I can't really think of another way of doing it see the problem is they could go full on hardcore um you know you, you die you lose everything but they can't do yeah. that because people have invested money to get ships and and whatever yeah um so that's that can't happen um so you're always going to have this kind of um i would say material uh aspect that you have to keep but it's, it's a virtual aspect that you have to keep of all the things yeah. that you might have bought in the game that's one thing but having this kind of cloning uh way of dealing with it i don't really see another way of them making it work apart f no i don't I, I would love for someone to come up with a an actual valid way of doing it other than cloning yeah but i haven't seen it yet and I can't really think of an, another way of doing it. Um, you need some way of hand waving them away the fact that you your ship blew up light years from anywhere uh, and you appear in a, in a med bed uh, on a planet. Yeah. You, you need a way of explaining that um, without, you know, you were floating in space for 200 years and then someone found your body. Um, that yeah. does, it doesn't work. There has to be a way to explain it. And I think this whole cloning thing is really the only way that they can make it work. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, like you said, there's there's, there's going to be two courses of action here. There's going to be one which is trying to keep it realistic, but within the realms of the game. Yeah. And then one that is just going to be magic. You know, you you literally just have to be, it's either this route or you just respawn. No explanation, magic. Magic. You know, and that, yeah. would, that would suck. No one wants that. And so... Yeah, uh, it really is the only way I can foresee them handling this in a way that kind of pleases everyone to a degree, uh, and that's all they can do. They can only please everyone to a certain degree. Um, then you know they're never, no one's, we're never going to have a hundred percent of the community a hundred percent happy. No, because <laughs> that's just it, it just can't, can't happen. happen so no. uh, yeah, but no, I'm I'm fine with it, and uh, I think it's I think it'll be an interesting thing to see when it comes out. Um, just what kind of an impact it has on gameplay and just how people react with other people in the verse etc it's going to be interesting yeah there comes a point where you you can't be as realistic or uh, immersive or you know uh, now down to science as what everyone wants because the fact remains that this is a game and it is not a real thing no um, it's not a sim no yeah, unfortunately, I think uh, a lot of people that want the real, true realism uh, in the, in the game need to dial back the expectation a little bit and just accept that some of this is going to be out of our control, uh, most assuredly, but also out of CIG's control because this is a game, and there are going to be certain rules that they can't really break, uh, and yeah, I think this is just going to be one of them. And like you say, it's going to be a um, a very heated topic for a, for a long time, I think. Even after the game comes out, whenever that's going to be, uh, I think it's still going to be a, um, a point of contention in the community. Yeah, I agree. Going to have to just live with game logic every now and then. Cool, so next up we've got a post from Vengeful Devil, and it says, Great show, Lando. You are a true meme lord. I have no other words. Um, and uh, Lando actually came back um, and he, he, there was a comment here where basically someone said, you know, 
he, he kind of used the uh, this is so cringe and please never again comments to fuel his memeing power. Um, and he said, um, as someone who was raised by the internet, I'm so proud of him. And Lando said, I was raised before the internet, but I have adopted its ways. <laughs> He's such a dude. Um, now, for those who aren't aware of what the hell we're talking about, um, if you watched Inside Star Citizen last week, um, you would have seen Lando um, kitted out in his finest. Um, in his Halloween finest, um, <laughs> he looked hilarious, and he had to, uh, honestly, it just looked like him before the shave, but with a little bit of lighting on him. Do yeah. You agree? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was actually a really good episode, and um, it was about five minutes of Lando just being Count Disco or whatever it was called. Yeah, um, and then you got the sort of informational pieces that you, you look for in an ISC uh, straight after. But um, overall, yeah. it was a, a really good episode. I actually quite enjoyed the whole Count Disco going around the CIG office when there's no one there kind of thing. Um, yeah, yeah, funny. It's creepy. And uh, <laughs> making random Wilson football friends um, of uh, Brian Chambers and, and Mark Hamill was also quite <laughs> quite amusing. Yeah, I can imagine it's all his, his idea. And he's a weird bloke, but he's an awesome dude. And we've said this before. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people who used to really rag on him and i don't know why because i think that he does the best he can with what he's got to make it entertaining and funny and i think it does i think he does a, a great job so uh and um i do miss his hair uh i'm not gonna lie <laughs> you know the, the old disco wookie was awesome but, oh, yeah. um yeah you know it's, it's it's good but yeah he does he does make that show um and i think that it would be if you took out all of disco's sections and his little intros and all that sort of stuff i think it would be terribly boring to be honest yeah you need a you need a good personality to to present the news uh, back back in the day we used to have like um uh chris roberts and sandy uh giving the yeah. info out obviously <laughs> they they don't want to do that anymore um no so who, who else do you, do you get other than chris roberts to give you star citizen information uh, you need someone with a bit of character to, to yeah get the info out there and i think this goes doing a pretty good job there, there was a time when the isc videos were not really giving us much information and, um i think everyone in the community kind of expressed a, a need for, for more but um yeah lovely they've they've stepped the game up and can't really fault the iscs of the last couple of months no no they've been pretty good they're to the point and they're sort of saying what we need them to say you know and even if they're not um sort of as detailed as we'd want you know at least we're getting some new stuff um there's um uh, one the, the most recent i don't know if you saw it mm. um which it was to do with this whole zoo thing they've got and you know interaction and all that and i tell you what oh, an yeah. interesting interesting video that was i really did like that and i liked just watching how they dealt with all the interactions and all that and yeah it's isc's come a long way and i do think that yeah lando kind of you know kind of makes it really so yeah Congratulations. <laughs> okay, so next up we've got a post from Driftwood Badger and it says, election numbers are in, it was a landslide. Um, so I'll read these out for you. We've got um, the, the winner by quite a margin was uh, Leilani Addison, 45.42%. Uh, um, Titus Costigan was 17.89%. Uh, Iliana Sherard, look at me pronouncing words, 14.18%. Paul Lesalele, 13.53, and Mira Ngo, uh, 8.98. So she didn't do so well. Um, now, I'm going to be honest with you people. I don't do politics in real life, um, so I definitely don't do them in a game. But I know that Cryco did follow the uh, the elections a little bit more than me. So uh, what was your take on this? What do you think of this Leilani? <laughs> uh, I, I kind of followed it. Um yeah, I joined a couple of discussions and I actually uh, jumped into one of uh, DG 360 streams and we was uh, having a good laugh about it. Um, <laughs> I actually voted for Addison myself because she sounded the best. But um, yeah, I mean, who who really knows at this point? It's um, it, it's really down to the CIG writers now to actually do something with this. Uh, I'm not sure we're actually going to see much uh, kind of. Um, a fallout from this election at, at least yeah. for a long time uh, if ever 
who knows it might just be a fun little kind of lore piece and and that's it job done but um, it, yeah it really depends on what they come up with now um yeah like you say yeah addison kind of smashed it in this poll uh, we, we were seeing kind of evidence on this on twitter and a couple of other uh community uh votes where addison was coming out on top on pretty much everyone yeah. So it was kind of obvious anyway, but um, but yeah, yeah, she seemed like the the best one. Um, hopefully, she can create Skynet, uh, and that will be fun in the verse. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely, and a woman of color, which is always nice to see. So, yeah, um, and um, and you know, it kind of this is it's perfect because we've 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 now got um, you know, a um, a lady, a lady president. Um, which I'm sure maybe we've probably had before, but I, I don't know. Uh, but we've got a lady president, um, and it, it kind of um, not mirrors real life, but um, at the time of recording this, um, I just found out that Trump is out. I don't know if you heard about this. Has that come um, up now? Was that finally? Yeah, as far as, as far as I can see, unless he figures out some clever way to screw him over, Trump is no longer president of the United States, which is wonderful news um <laughs> because i genuinely hate that man with every fiber of my being so it's all good news i'm, I'm liking elections lately yeah so um one of the um the, the ones in in uh in star citizen uh, the paul lasau he he looked like a spitting image of trump so i couldn't vote for him that oh, that no. was never going to work um <laughs> titus costigan looked a bit like uh, kind of a bit like Hitler, so yeah, I think didn't go for him yeah. either. Um, Gerard, she kind of sounded like Moff Tarkin out of Star Wars, blowing up uh, the planet with uh, the Death Star. So right. I wasn't going to go for that one. And uh, no go was definitely a no go because yeah, no one voted for her. Yeah, it's um, they definitely didn't make it easy for themselves. I mean, if you're if you're going up for an election and you look in the mirror and you think. Wow, I look a lot like Hitler. You would probably do something <laughs> about that before the election. So I've, I've, I would have thought, you know, just, just, you know, just a thought. But, um, but yeah, no, it's it's interesting to see that they've kind of that they are thinking about this stuff. You know, even though the game is, you know, we moan about them putting time into things that aren't building this game out. But I do think that this is important stuff because it will write the backstory for the game and it will write the future of of you know how. NPCs are going to interact and all that kind of stuff. So I think it's it's. I really love the fact that there's so much thought put into this. Um, it pleases me. Yeah, yeah. What drew me to Edison was the the science side of it. Anytime I play a game, uh, let's say Civilization, right? I always um, go for science based first to get the technology yeah. advantage. So. Um, as soon as I started reading the Addison articles, I was like, yeah, okay, I'm going to vote for her because um, yeah. she's, she's all about science. She wants to improve technology and, and everything. And I was thinking, oh, maybe they can come up with some really cool new systems for new ships in the game. Could be really yeah. good. Maybe she can come up with some new AI blades that we can use or advanced robotics, whatever. Um, yeah. So it just sounded more interesting than everyone else who just wants to go and kill Vandal. It was like, oh, boring. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, because what what do you do once you've killed them all? Uh, kill each you other, know, I suppose. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Pick a new target. At least with her. I mean, yeah, like you know, imagine that if she comes up with some advancement in quantum travel and all of a sudden, you know, you're able to travel four times the distance. These are the sort of things that people should be pushing towards. Not, you know, let's just go punch that man in the face because I don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so last up, we've got a post from Nazgul. Nazgul 9. Nazgul. Is that Nazgul? Isn't that a vampire? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nazgul. Um, CIG, please stop dragging out the MSR for the IAE and the Elimina P and the QRST. We all know it's finished. Um, so for those of you who don't know what all of these acronyms are, the Mercury Star Runner and the IAE, because I don't even know what that stands for, International assholes everywhere in, in is that right interstellar <laughs> aerospace exposition something like that <laughs> that one yeah um so um yeah basically nuzgul is under the impression that the mercury star runner is basically being held back until ie so that they can kind of announce it with a big fanfare we did kind of call this 
Um, not necessarily saying that it's, it might not even be intentional. You know, we can't say with 100% certainty they are doing this nefariously so that they can, you know, really push it out. It might just be the way it, it fell, but it's probably going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're probably not going to see a separate patch just for the Star Runner to get released into the verse. I can't really see that happening. They'll no. more than likely wait for the uh, Expo patch to drop and it'll be in there. Or it'll be after that when they take the uh, Expo out again, maybe. But yeah, like you say, we kind of called this on Discord, I think it was a couple of weeks ago. But yeah. it, it was likely going to come out uh, at the expo and it does kind of look like it's going to go that way yeah definitely and I mean I don't see why not now I mean if if it's already delayed and we're only weeks away I mean they might as well you know at least it, and and like a lot of the comments are actually saying I mean what what the hell else are they going to reveal at, um, at the convention if not that ship because I mean it's there's nothing really new or shiny to push out other than that ship so if they want something for the convention that's kind of their only option i think yeah there's there's a couple of rumors going around about this uh is it the odin the rsi odin some sort of big gunboat hammerhead style type thing um mm -hmm. you know whether we actually i mean that's been rumored for uh, quite a few months now so whether it actually comes out or not who knows um you know rumors but um yeah. Chances are they will uh, reveal a new concept ship uh, at the expo. Whether it's going to be flight ready or not remains to be seen. We'll find out in a couple of weeks. But uh, they'll definitely release something to, to grab some more money into the, the kitty. So, uh, yeah. And yeah, making loads of money out of um, Star Runner sales as well. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a, a pretty good Christmas for CIG. Oh yeah, and I tell you what, if they really, really want to piss everyone off for Christmas, then rather than releasing the Mercury Star Runner, delay it till next patch and bring out a straight to flyable new ship. <laughs> I think there'd be murders. There'd be murders. There would be, uh, yeah. Imagine if they did yeah. that for the Carrick as well. Oh my god, yeah. This just it's just I think they know their audience now, so that would be uh, very unwise. But I am looking forward to the Mercury Star Runner because it, it just looks like a really cool ship, like something I just want to be in. Yeah, it's probably going to end up being my my day to day ship. Well, I say that until they bring out another ship which I really like, and then that will be my day to day <laughs> ship. But, yeah, but uh, yeah, uh, I'm still half considering upgrading one of my uh, crappy little LTI ships you know, into the Star Runner. But then on the other hand, I I kind of want to earn it in game as well. I'm I'm a bit yeah. tall on that one, but. Um, I'm sure when I finally get to, to fly the Star Run, I'm, I'm going to fall in love with it and probably end up buying it anyway. Definitely. Yeah, I can, I can see it happening. And I mean, hopefully there'll be plenty more that we can earn in-game um, because I'm going to spend most of my time in your Star Runner probably as a passenger because <laughs> why wouldn't I? <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I do. Yeah, I do hope we see it soon because um yeah it would just be nice to, to to have a little walk around it in real life this was the um this was the ship where we saw the the outline of it at the um the last convention they did is that the one yes yeah yeah and it looked really awesome but you couldn't it wasn't physical you couldn't get in it and it no. wasn't tactile yeah it was like a hollow thing in one of the exposition halls i think it was um, that's it yeah yeah looked really good can't wait to have yeah. a look at it. Okay, so there you have it, folks. That is all the posts for this week. Uh, we hope you like them. We hope you found them informative or amusing. And if you did like them, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more Star Citizen content. And don't forget to hit that bell uh, if you want to be notified when we post new videos. And um, don't forget to come join us for streams. If you want to um, be involved on a Thursday for Star Citizen, then um, definitely sign up to our Discord. Um, and if you just want to watch us poo our pants on a Tuesday, then uh, we do that in Phasmophobia and it's terrifying. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, it's good fun. But yeah, we, we do appreciate you guys watching and um, we hope we can see you next week. Bye bye. Bye bye.